overcame the obstacles All the people that was hating Ooh. Hard work pays off all Now I'm sitting like a boss 2020, yeah, we getting money Yeah, we never gonna fall off Sullivan and Hoops by Nature, man. No doubt, man. Yeah, look out for the gym, bro. It's going to be it's a one-of-one one with the technology-based gym, bro. It's going to change the culture of Columbus basketball, bro. No doubt. And it, and it's like, man, is it is it still a hidden thing or is this known about? I mean, it's like... Oh, nah, it's, you, you've seen it. It's, it's still in the it's early still in stages, the, yeah. but those who know, know, and those who... Unbelievable. Be it, crazy. It's be crazy, bro. Yeah. Um, like... Have you ever played in Rucker? I never Did played you ever get in to play Rucker. In Rucker. I've been up there. It's so crazy. I could have. And uh, I've been up there so many times. I got family to live, not far, like walking distance to, to the Rucker. Yeah. But I've been up there. I never played in it, man. I know I played against a lot of dudes that played in it. I know a lot of guys from up in New York. I used to be in New York a lot. Yeah. Um, so, nah, I just went there <laughs> with my wife, though, <laughs> recently, which is funny. We, but we just went up there and just, you know. Yeah. It's, just, it's, a, it's a landmark when you're from the hood and you hoop. So I just went up there, but I never played it. Okay, okay. Uh, who was your favorite Rucker player? Skip. Man, Skip. I said you you yeah, had that. Man. Skip, man. You had that. I met Skip too. So one of my one of my good friends. Alamo Code too, though. Alamo was dope, man. Alamo Code cool. too. But let me tell you about it when I met Skip, bro. It's funny how you meet people who you really look up to when you're young. Yeah. Um. So Skip, one of my friends is from Forty Projects. That's where Skip's from. Okay. And uh. And where's that at? That's in Queens. That's Queens. Jamaica, Queens, Southside. Okay. So uh, I used to always talk stuff to him. I mean, I kill Skip, bro. I, uh, <laughs> uh, right? Yeah. I used to always talk stuff. He laughing. So we go to, uh, I happen to be in New York uh, around July 4th. Right? Okay. So in their projects, they, they have an old school versus new school game on July 4th. And their, their, their hoop is like in the back of the projects. So we go back there. And they going hard, bro. Like, New York City basketball is, like, at that time, it was so different because every project's got their own court, their mm. own culture. And they go hard. You would think you're in the rucker in almost any court. Any court you, you want. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, just soaking all of that in and just watching, vibing. So we leaving from the court out the projects. Guess who we see? Skip to my little Rafe. With about seven bad ones with him, bro. Woo. By himself, bro. Easy. So... Him and uh, him and my dude Ty, shout out to my man Ty. Him and Ty, uh, they get to talking stuff to each other like, "You a bum, man? Let's go to the back right now. What's up? Just talking that talk, right?" Yeah. And uh, and then he 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 said, uh, "Oh, this is my man Ty Han from Ohio, man." Um, so I'm like, "What's up, man? Good to meet you." He like, "Good to meet you." He like, "Yeah, Ty, tell him uh, tell Skip what you were saying." <laughs> Skip looking at me like, "I'm like, nah, I love your game, bro." <laughs> So that was my skip to my loose. Yeah, he was skip my favorite, man. He was different. He changed the game, bro. Yeah, he did. He, he did. What um what do you how'd you feel like when he got in the NBA and kinda of did some of his street stuff? Did you know, do you think he did that to show the like I made it and even if even if this get me kicked out, I'm gonna do what I do? I look at it different. I look at it like Like was that a statement? I look at it like this, John. I look at it like you got there, you got your notoriety and you got to you come from Fresno State of the fact that you're skipped to my loop. That's special. crazy, yeah. The way you handle the ball, the way you pass the ball, the way you can get others involved and all that, that's what makes you who you are. Yeah. Right? Um, And it carried you all the way to the NBA, right? To so the when finals. Skip, yeah, so I think this is what happened. Skip confined his game to show everybody I can really play basketball and I can really hit this open shot. But when it, when it was at the realest moment, and on the highest of stages, Skip to my Lou came out. Yeah. Ray for Austin was playing basketball, but Skip came out. And you got to be who you are. I think that's. I think that is uh, the lesson in that. Like, it, I obviously can't do all the moves, but like that creativity that got you. That's what came out. He was killing Derrick Christian. The only yeah, game they won. He was killing him. And then here comes Jameer Nelson. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. But like to me, that it was just a testament of like that merge. All the naysayers of the. People who play like who talk bad about people who got a creative style, bro, it show you it worked, bro. You gotta be who you are, but you're not always in that position to be able to do that too. You know, yeah. Skip was smart enough to to know how um, to maneuver. Like, okay, 
I'm Skip at this time, but I'm ready for Austin right now. I got to get these men, these M's, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. Shout out to Skip, bro. Shout he, out to he, Skip, he, man. He did, he did his thing. Yeah, for sure. Now, how has, um, how has like your spirituality led to you founding a, a gym in the city where you're bringing professional athletes they're allowed to play with uh, up and coming high school players and local area players that you elect to play and this whole community based field. How did that become the Kingdom Summer League and what is what is a kingdom? For, from a spiritual level, man, from a spiritual standpoint, um, there was a rest in peace to Dr. Miles Monroe, man. Uh, he was a mentor of mine, great teacher, bro, great, great teacher. Um, Basically, he broke down, he understood that the Bible was a book about a kingdom. A kingdom, a king, his kingdom, and his royal kids. When you break it all the way down, and, and the thing, what it made it profound to me is I never was taught that. You know what I'm saying? All the church I went to and all the Bible that I, I, I got read to me and all of that, I never heard that concept. And he broke it down from a governmental standpoint um, where we're in a democracy. The USA is a democracy, right? Um, UK is a democracy. Most civilized uh, countries are democracies or republics, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the concept of a kingdom is uh, the total opposite to a democracy or a republic. Case in point, in a kingdom, the constitution starts, I, the king, declare, decree, whatever the, whatever the laws and commands of that land are. Yeah. And a democracy is we the people. You know what I'm saying? And we we have painted it to be uh, a democracy, to be the end all be all when it comes to politics, but we got our fallacies just like anything else. Yeah. See, what happened is the, the man made kingdoms were so corrupted that we wanted to get away from kingdom. But when you talk about kingdom of God, when you talk about the, 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 the righteous king, you know what I'm saying? The most benevolent king. Yeah. That format is really what we're supposed to get back to in terms of spirituality. Okay. So when I understand As citizens. That, as citizens. Yeah. But here's the thing. In a, in a man-made kingdom, you got citizens or subjects. Okay. Right? In the kingdom of Yah, you got family. Everybody yeah. who's into it is, is, is royal his family. son. Yeah, his son or his daughter. They're royal family. Yeah. So as, as royal family, as, as a royal seed, you get the inheritance. You get everything that comes with being in the kingdom. Yeah. So Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Meaning you know it's, a, uh, it's already in place according to your walk. You just got you, you to do These, Seek first these the things kingdom. are available yeah, to you. Yeah, and the righteousness and everything's available. So case in point, for anybody to know the Bible, you heard it. Is that, that too I, heavy? Do you feel like that's too heavy of a concept? It's not, but if you, it, it's just like anything else. If you don't really want to break that down and understand it, it's going to be too heavy. That's anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. the, I, a case in point, the prodigal son. When okay. you break down that story, here, here's, a, here's a royal son, gets his inheritance, wants to do whatever he wanted to do. He lives. He went and lived. He came back humble. What did, what, did, what did the king do? Did the king shun him or tell him to come off? No. no. He, he rejoiced and celebrated and brought him back in the fall. He restored him. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So that's basically us in a nutshell. You know what I mean? So yeah. once I start to understand that, then I re went back as an adult and, and read the word for myself with that kingdom mindset. It was, it was a game changer. Was you upset? Did you feel anxious? I, for sure, bro. You know what I mean? Because you feel misled and you feel lied to in a lot of ways. Some of it, some of it, there's some people out here and there's some leaders out here who are ignorant to it, you know what I mean, and not doing it um, out of out of deceit, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. then again, there's a whole agenda, you know, being for, pushed. Yeah, exactly. So you know what I'm saying? I was, yeah. but but bigger than anger and all of that was hunger and thirst, like you know what I mean? Yeah. For righteousness and trying to do it the right way. So uh, I let that fuel me more than anger. So what does your league represent when it comes to a kingdom? So when it comes to the kingdom... Are you playing for God? In, 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 in a way, yeah. So basically, basically, how the whole concept came is I had to do something within my sphere of influence and, 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 and purpose and passion. And obviously, basketball has always been um, that, right? Yeah. So, or one of, the four, one of the main things. So I said, okay, what can I do with the game to make it not, you know, about me, but about the kingdom mentality, the kingdom concept. And <clears throat> that's what I came up with, you know what I mean? I just, I, I, I knew it was a void in terms of 
having like a pro am. We had a pro am, and we used to have a Worthington League. Worthington League was an awesome league. Yeah, yeah. But um, this new generation, I just wanted to create something for them and make it an event. You know what I'm saying? Make it community based. Make it to where um, kids, families, you know what I mean, black, white, Asian, whatever, could come together in the name of basketball and and, and community and have a good time, man, throughout the summer. And, um, it's, it's definitely grown into what I, I envision, and, and we're going to go even further, you know what I mean? Now, now I don't know if a lot of people know watching this, but you actually participate. Yeah. How are you able to thrive in the nuances of how the game has evolved? Well, I guess the good part maybe is it's not as physical, but how are you still able to play? Um, <laughs> first and foremost, man, grace to the most high, man, for giving me um, perfect health and allowing me to stay – Limber enough, athletic enough to keep up with these dudes, cause man, we got some some special talent, bro. But um, yeah, that I try to stay around the game. I, you know, I, I I train, so you teach what you need to learn. You know what I'm saying? So everything I try to teach, I try to keep make sure I implement it in my own game and with my own body in terms of like eating right and stretching and resting. And I don't got too many vices, you know. I don't kick it like that. So yeah, I think um, my temple done held up pretty good, you know. And I know how and and. The older you get, the more you know the game, you know. Your yeah. skills are still there, you know what I mean? Just, so you can hit a shot off the backboard from the top of the key, basically. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I done, put in, I done put in a lot of hours, man. A lot, yeah. a lot of hours, bro. A lot of it's muscle memory, just know how, you know what I mean? So angles and stuff like that. What if an athlete or has an athlete ever came to you and said, I know you're my trainer, but I'm getting ready to go into this negotiation. And uh, I want you to represent me as a sports agent or or has an athlete ever came to you and say, I have these products and I want you to help me promote them or market them? Or how would that work? Um, would you be open to something like that? Well, I've got a post about being an agent or being a manager or working my way up to an agent. And honestly, you know, I don't want to do it, bro. Honestly, um, I, could I help? Probably so. Is it is it for me? I don't think it's for me. You know what I'm saying? And you gotta know you gotta know your lane, bro. And whatever you do, uh, I would definitely. It's a lot to go into all of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's some good there's some good managers and there's some good agents, but man, that's that's that game is shiesty, bro. It's real shiesty. So okay. I wouldn't want to be involved in it. Um, that that just ain't my thing. You know what I mean? Manage from. I like to consult. I like being more of a consultant where I can, you can call or I can come through or whatever the case and I can give you some sound advice, some yeah. suggestions, you know what I'm saying? And you got my support, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's my other thing. What, is, what was the other part of the question? Uh, uh, product placement or like if they yeah. had a product. I've done a lot of that. I've done a lot of that. And to me, bigger than, I mean, business is business and you got to do business. Yeah. But bigger than just business is support. If I, and this is me, if I believe in something, or I believe in the vision behind something, I'm gonna support it flat out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm a, like I give you a case in point, uh, uh, Dominique Jones, man, legend. Okay. One of the goats in football. He got a he, he has an organization called Legacy U. Yeah, shout really out Legacy product, U. Yeah. You know, what he's doing with them young men is phenomenal, bro. So like, yeah. whatever I can ever do for for DJ and Legacy U. Man, I'm gonna do it, bro, because I know, you know, I know what's behind that. I know the intention and the work they putting in. So yeah, yeah, for sure. So and then with product placement, yeah, I got I got brands, and then I have um, sponsors who who sponsor the league, and, and we work together in that capacity. We got a nice platform, so I try to use the platform in the right way. And if anybody I can help, I'm gonna definitely do that. Now, if somebody wants to get down with the summer league to uh, to possibly donate or come out and see a great event um is there any updates with COVID? and then do you have any like social media plugs definitely um well the updates with the COVID situation i think we're going to be able to have the the kingdom this year all all signs are pointing towards that um uh, just look forward to an amazing and amazing season man amazing summer because dudes are hungry and itching to get back <laughs> on that court man. definitely and i've been in i've been in communication with some NBA dudes, man. So I'm gonna try to bring some new NBA faces in, and it's gonna be a marvelous time. 
And in terms of like where we can be found um, on Instagram, Kingdom Summer League, Facebook, Kingdom Summer League, and then we have uh, KingdomFirst.org. That's um, that's the umbrella that the Kingdom Summer League is under. Our, uh, that is our uh, nonprofit that we do a lot of stuff in the community through. So. Okay. Now, also, I want to ask you, excuse me. <coughs> do you have any... Um, do you have any um, links to other places where you're talking about um, basketball or podcasts or anything? Uh, I do. Uh, we have a YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, Kingdom Summer League again. Okay. Um, I do some. I do interviews myself. I've, I've been able to interview uh, a lot of the big time guys out of Columbus. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna probably continue going uh, moving forward, get some more stuff going. Uh, so we got, yeah, a lot of that stuff is on YouTube. And yeah, you got the Mike Red interview. Yeah, we got the Mike Red one. Yeah. Uh, Mike Red, Trey Burke. Uh, Burke. Byron Mullins. Uh, Burke is special, man. Yeah, he is, bro. He's special. He's special. He dude. stay on go. Always, man. You know. And his back has been against the wall so many times. Bro. Man, he come out firing. Every time, bro. Every man, time. I mean, the fire that you hold on to. I remember one time I seen him working out with you, mm -hmm. and I didn't know who he was at the time. And he did the drill, man. It was a blur. <laughs> I look back. I was like, I, man, I ain't never seen nobody go that hard in a drill like that, man. <laughs> it's funny because, man, his, his story is so relatable, man. Like, you know, like, underdog always counted out too small, too this, too this, too that. And every time, bro, every time he's back against the wall, that dude come through, man. And he, you know, he got a spiritual relationship. He, he, he got some spirituality to him. Yeah. And uh, he's woke in terms of a lot of things that's going on in this world. And he tries to use this platform the best yeah. as he can. So um, shout out to him, man. Shout out to him, man. And I, what I like is how he adapted his game, man. He was, they was trying to label him as an AI. And, it, you know, because he'll bust you down for 30 yeah. straight up. He'll yeah. bust your head, for boy. Sure. And he found a way to fit into this nuance of how they're playing yeah. now. And still get his. Yeah, man, you gotta be able to adapt, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying that's that's, that's a different really, preparation, man. Yeah, for sure. For it's sure. a different and preparation. Mentally, it is. Mentally, it is. Yeah. Because just like we was talking about, I gotta get game. 32 on a reversal. <laughs> that's what Jason Smith used to always say to me. You gotta reverse it, dude. <laughs> you coming out shooting, you gotta pass it and get it back, go through. Damn, the defense gonna collapse on you. <laughs> I'm like, man, you got six turnovers. You're like, I don't care. I got 32, though. That was cold word. That was Smith, though. You got to get it on the reversal. That was cold word for giving back to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I can get busy. Smith I already know I ain't going to see it no more after I give it to him. <laughs> I'm going to keep it real, man. I wish I would have got to play with Smith, man. Oh, you'd have loved it, bro. We would have did some damage, man. Bro, he starts a whole fire in the locker room. What you, what you about to go out there and do? Shit, I'm about to score 40. They can't, go, they can't hold me. You better get ready. What you eating them, what you eating them donuts for? You're not gonna do nothing. This is all that Tupac. Good morning. But hey, check this out though. I'm gonna ask you a couple questions. Yeah. Uh, but before I even go there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about Roosevelt Trotter. Yeah. Roosevelt Trotter and Terry Allen, rest in peace, mm -hmm. are the only two players that ever made me get dressed and leave. Because <laughs> I said, y'all got this by yourself. You know what I mean? Hit so many threes. Yeah. yeah. Rosie. Shout out to him. Let me, let me get Rosie some and Give him some props, bro. Give him some flowers, bro. That's my dude. I love Rosie, man. <laughs> Rosie, Rosie, I'll tell you this. That dude had a good heart, man. He let 20 hooligans in his house, man, every day, every night, man. No doubt. His peoples, man, I love the Trotters, man. They used to feed us, bro. Like, literally, man. Go in there and get a bowl of cereal. Shout out to the Trotter yeah, family, man. man. You know what I mean? Like he, we used to we used to go hoop all night at the center, come over his house, play video games, watch listen, film, listen, listen to You know what I mean? Listen to part with that need the new DJ Clue come out or, or Jay Z or whatever <laughs> yeah. was hot at that time, bro. We yeah. Right in Rosie's basement, man. That new Cormega. Cormega, whatever was yeah. out, bro. Shout out Roosevelt me? Trotter. You know what I mean? He the first dude I ever seen dribble up the shot clock. <laughs> And now they get it, they do it in the NBA. <laughs> now that's my and dude. And pull bro. from the hatch mark. He had some talent too. He man. was ahead of his time, he man. Some, he had some talent, bro. He was quick. He could shoot that thing. Shout out to Rosie, man, and the whole Trotter family. No doubt. And that's why I was gonna ask you, man. Like Roosevelt's game was ahead of his time. And when I watched the the deep threes by Dame, the deep threes by Steph and them, you know Trey, all them, I'm thinking Rosie. Yeah. 
Because Rosie used to pull from back there. Him, Seth. You got to think, man, we come from. Seth had a burner. Yeah. Seth probably was the best standstill shooter I've seen. Yeah, but I Rosie get it off the dribble. Yeah, Rosie, Rosie did. No mid-range. That's where I, that's yeah, when I started beating him. I'll replay him on that line. No layup, <laughs> no three, but you're going to shoot that mid-range. But I think, honestly, man. He know that, too. He a, lot of our guys, a lot of our guys in our hood, man, would have went a lot further with the right guidance and the right culture, man. We, yeah. we, we from the bottom, man, so it wasn't too many people c trying to come back and pull us up, man. So that's why... I, I Rosie's know. dad was up there like Lonzo Ball and them, though. Right. Rosie's dad was LeVar Ball before <laughs> LeVar. He LeVar Ball, LeVar Ball My senior. My son to bust your head. He gonna bust your head. Bust his head, Rosie. Listen, man, we used to go to the courts, man. We used to go to the courts. His dad All right, P. Mr. Like, Trotter, run him, man. Run him like the Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> he was all our dad, man. Yeah, man. We all wanted to make him proud. We wanted to bust Rosie's head, too. Yeah, that was my dude, man. For real. Peace to him, man. Know some good people, man. Trotters really took in a lot of people like family, man. You no know, doubt. No and, doubt. In the hood, when we all struggling, man, that go, that go. And I think way. about him a lot watching these NBA. This new NBA. Yeah, that's that's that was my man. Yeah, Rosie, Rosie was ahead of the ahead of the game, man. You you got a point. I ain't even never. Yeah, he that. was, man. <laughs> Nash kind of got away with it under Dan Tony, which was still European. Yeah. And then when they finally went full throttle with it, which the NBA might have was looking at the prototype yeah. of that product. And they said, this is how we playing now. I'm like, man, that is Rosie. I swear, they done went open gym with it. That's crazy. Between. Yeah, and Rosie going to hit two out of five, though. That's 40. They're going to hit two out of five. Between, between the analytics and, and, and yeah, with Steph and Dane, bro, the game's been changed. Yeah. And Rosie was definitely on that. I mean, but and I see, swear. I remember you used to pull from deep. Yeah. But you told me, you was like, man, it's kind of like, um, you said, for one, the NBA line is a little further back. Mm -hmm. And then you was like, I'm getting people. So you was kind of training people and your drills. To sh well, you was doing that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if everybody else was doing it. I'm pulling up from the elbow, but you was pulling <laughs> from 26 feet out with ease. You know what I'm saying? And this is what I found out about shooting from way back there. Like, it's, it opens it opens the floor up to you. So, mm -hmm. like, Dame, Dame, and not to compare myself to Dame and Steph, but, like, Dame and Steph shooting out there now you gotta play them honest way up there now i can break it down and do whatever i want you know what I'm yeah saying? so it just make you a threat for me right? and that's that ali oop is always available once that you know big man coming is the big man gone nah he just the big man is just revolutionized he ain't gone he just revolutionized um and Embiid is the perfect example uh Jokic is the perfect example of that but like you know a lot of guys want to face up man you gotta think about it you in our era it was guard heavy yeah. Start with AI, right? It yeah. Was, it was all about the guard. And if you're a big dude and you come up all these years and it's guard, 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 and I'm 6'10 and I ain't getting the ball, I'm going to learn how to dribble too. Yeah. I'm going to learn how to shoot too. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? So I think that's just what happens. Pick, instead of pick and roll, I'm going to pick and pop. I'm going to send yeah. a defender at him on purpose. And I'm going to get the rebound and I'm going <laughs> to uh, 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 I'm gonna push it now because I can't get the ball. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's and like you said, the European influence. A lot of uh, the, the the big the bigs in Europe could, had a lot of skill. You know what I mean? So yeah. They could, they could shoot and pass and handle the ball better than our traditional big at the time. So now nah, he ain't dead in the it's it's dead in the sense of back to the basket, throw it in inside out. That yeah. Style is dead, but the big man ain't dead. And see, back in the day, we was quick to use that word. Like you know, you talking about Ronnie Cycli, John Conca. Bum. Yeah. Fact. But now everybody moving. The Plumleys looking good. Mm -hmm. You know, all them dudes that would have been stiff and kind of, you know, Steven Adams. Everybody look good. The whole product looks good. Yeah. I don't know if I like it, but I can honestly say everybody, you know what I mean? Man, you got to accept stuff for what it is. Hip yeah. Hip hop, basketball, football. Yeah. Like everything has changed, bro, because um, the, more, the more we live, bro, the more we going to learn. 